Happy Tuesday morning, everybody. We certainly appreciate you turning on the radio because we like company around here at WCLU. We'd like for you to join us as we celebrate our heritage, our past, our history. It's the archives as harbored at the South Central Kentucky Cultural Center. A lot of folks call it the Museum of the Barons. We call it a miracle around here as much as we, as much as we learn to love our history. And some of the exhibits over there, well, you know, I was Sam Terry's with me. Good morning, Sam. Good morning. How are you today? Henry? I'm good. I was bragging the other day talking to about the Cultural Center about uh, this neat little uh, thing they have down there. It's a scavenger hunt where yes. you, t- you take uh, youngsters. Uh, let's say you want to go to the Cultural Center. Uh, they've got a really neat scavenger hunt where you go through the exhibits and you find uh, interesting things like I know one of them that I uh, my grandson had to look for was a Strader's dairy milk carton is in one of the exhibits and there's all types of neat things to do at the cultural center and kind of in a neat way turns the light switch on about our heritage around here too it certainly does all right I'm going to go back to 100 years let's go back and look back a century Sam the Glasgow Times uh, has a letter to the editor a letter to the editor of the Times and the letter reads as follows. At a prayer service of the Methodist Minist- Missionary Society, the editor of the Glasgow Times was warmly commended and endorsed for the stand he is taking against the illegal sale of liquor in our community. The ladies of the uh, Methodist Missionary Society uphold and endorse his warfare on the illegal sale of liquor that is making merchandise of the souls of young men and boys for whom Christ died. Well, that's right. a nice letter to the editor for sure. <laughs> Indeed, and uh, you know it, uh, it. You know it takes a. At that level, you have to uh, be. Your convictions have to be carried out front. If you want to do something about that, and they write the letter, you got to publish it because it's nice that people recognize that for sure. Well, I can say, having read the nineteen twenty four papers, uh, the every edition was full of news about the war against bootleggers and bootlegging in yes. Glasgow in particular. It was it was certainly something that we probably wouldn't recognize this day and time, would we? No. 1934, the news in the Times about manager Charlet of the Mammoth Cave Hotel certainly did himself proud last week when he fed more than 400 guests of the legislative specialty in exactly two hours. And best of all, everybody was satisfied. The visitors following the lunch visited both the new entrance to Mammoth Cave and the old entrance of the Cave Hotel. Now, the way it reads to me, they hosted the legislature at Mammoth Cave. Uh, well, and I believe it was a special uh, uh, group of train cars okay. full of the legislature, okay, legislators, okay. Okay. Well, I and missed the their, train car uh, part. invited <laughs> guests. <laughs> Well, and so uh, 400 people being fed in two hours is quite a feat. It is good. Uh, in 1934 in particular. And, and to say that everybody in the legislature was satisfied is a fairly rare treat, too, you know. That was in 1934 at Mammoth Cave. Gosh, they had, they had to have all hands on deck, didn't they? This day in 1944, the new Kentucky Pants Factory on Wayne Street entered the completed phase of operations with 54 workers on the floor. And Sam, you know, we don't think about the Pants Factory being over on Wayne Street. I don't recall that. I mean, obviously, I wasn't around here in 1944. The big one's right to here at the Cultural Center, but I guess they had grown so much they needed to, I guess, at least rent a building over there on Wayne Street, don't you think? Yes, I would imagine so. And, uh, you know, business was booming. And uh, they just needed uh, to have uh, whatever the business was over there. It took 54 workers to get it done. So well, certainly the uh, you know the Washington Manufacturing uh, Group, Kentucky Pants Factory Group, uh, had a lot of government contracts, and they were sewing uh, not necessarily uh, pants, but all sorts of things mm-hmm. uh, for uh, the military during World War II. What a, what a heritage that uh, facility has has had in our community. We got some technical wonders here in 1954, as reported in the uh, Glasgow Republican. The Plaza Theater, Sam, is announcing the first showing of a world premiere to be in 3D. That's right. Special glasses for viewing will be for viewing will be sold inside the lobby at the Plaza Theater. Also, you can buy permanent 3D glasses for all 3D pictures. The archivist notes that uh, to view three-dimensional film, it was necessary that one wear these special glasses. So you could get some 
some El Cheapos for that show or buy some permanent 3D glasses. Exactly. A lot of fun. 1954. That was big. The plaza was, you know, uh, uh, groundbreaking in a lot of different ways in 54. 1964, A.B. Hensley, he's 56, the owner of Hensley Motors of Horse Cave, was injured when a, listen to this, plate glass window blew in on him during the violent storm which struck this area. Wow. My goodness, what a scary, scary thing to have happen for Mr. A.B. Hensley over in uh, Horse Cave, Kentucky. Uh, let's look at uh, 1974. Sam, we've got news about former state trooper Ronnie West of Heisville. Ronnie was promoted last week to state detective, effective March the 1st. One of our very well-known, uh, now-retired troopers. Well-known well state trooper. He's from your neighborhood, too, you know, and an excellent state trooper. Indeed. Uh, another promotion, for sure, in 1974. 1984, uh, Carrie Weiniger of Glasgow was a candidate for the Mrs. Kentucky Beauty Pageant to be held March the 17th in Louisville. She is being sponsored by the Double L Oil Drilling Company of Heisville. Congratulations to uh, Miss Weininger there in uh, 1984. That you know that's always was a impressive competition. Those uh, gals got together and uh, put on uh, quite uh, the the pageantry. It certainly sure. is, and we've had uh, many of our local contestants move on to uh, the state. Uh, pageants and perhaps beyond that even it was 1994 that was announced that plans are underway for the high school high school class of 1959's 35th reunion and the glasgow high school's class of 1944 50th reunion just a lot of reunion talk here in 1994 they were getting a an early uh, step on <laughs> yeah. uh, planning reunion that's right I, well you know you think about that uh, not that many places to have big time reunions, and it takes a little while for people to make plans to come home. And so, why not get it out there early? And hopefully, that helped to help the crowd. Sam, this was the day in 2004 that uh, Bill Frazier and Virginia Thompson were announced as Glenview Healthcare's Valentine King and Queen. That was in the Barron County Progress in 2004. Seems to me like I remember. Uh, Miss Thompson being in one of those Mrs. It, Kentucky it, it, She was indeed. Over and the years, too. I believe she had advanced to uh, higher levels of competition. Yeah. Well, obviously, uh, obviously her beauty carried her many places here with being the uh, king and queen, or the queen at least, at Glenview Healthcare in 2004. And it was 2014, Sam, the news that R.R. R. Donnelly was honoring employees Andy Branch, Pam Caudell, and Vicki Johnson for exceptional service in their departments. Uh, not a week goes by that, that, that we don't talk about the impact that R.R. Donnelly had on this community for a lot of various reasons, uh, not the least of which was in 2014, uh, we had three employees to be honored just for the exceptional service that they do. One of the many secrets of the longevity that R.R. Donnelly Company had uh, in, in its history here in our community. A, uh, a great part of our community made a difference for sure just some things to think about this morning uh in the archives as we're up and running a lot of folks have memories of donnelly a lot of folks have memory of uh some of the things we mentioned in the archives maybe it'll spawn a little conversation where you go today too sam thank you for your research thank you for uh the uh, willingness to sit here and help promote history of a uniquely historic place kept alive by Special folks at the South Central Kentucky Cultural Center. Thanks to you and Gail Berry, as well as uh, Debbie Pace, as well as the volunteers who come down there at the Cultural Center and to help dig through this fabulous history. Shall we reconvene tomorrow? I can't wait. I think we'll probably find some more interesting morsels from our past here on the archives. <laughs>